Then, when you've got your outline, then I put, I put a rough draft of my PowerPoint slides together. Of course, send it to my associate who adds the bells and whistle. Oh, Patricia, I love the video. I love the music. How do you do that? I don't know. <laughs> you pay people. You pay people because your time is worth. Do what you do best. I would rather you pay someone to put together your PowerPoint while you're rehearsing how do you deliver your stories. What do you say when you turn your PowerPoint off? That's where you need to be spending your time. Now, every presentation is built around a premise, a central theme, a big idea. This is why I ask my clients, if you had one sentence, what would you say? If you cannot explain it simply, you might not understand it. Your audience won't get it. If I say, what is your presentation about? One sentence. I'll give you two. I'll give you three. If you answer in a paragraph, it won't be clear enough. When my career was mostly keynote speaking, a lot of the times clients would hire me to attend the entire conference and then do not only a closing speech, but review all the key ideas that had been heard. And I, of course, was all prepared from, this was a banking conference, everything that happened the day before. There was a speaker right before me, Richard Putts, and he was giving a two-hour program, and then I was getting up right after and I had to review his presentation. So I said, can you tell me as simply as possible what your two-hour presentation is about? He said, collaboration. I said, that is a man who understands his subject. One word for two hours, collaboration. Think about your next, pres think about your next presentation. How long do you have to speak? Who is the audience? What is your subject matter? And now see how you would design the premise. Often, and you've heard me in some of my, in my sessions say, my premise is. Yesterday, I did not state my premise. I said, welcome to Fifty Shades of Frit. You will hear of observations made, advice received, experiences lived. You knew how you were going to get it. I hope you walked away knowing that the premise of the speech was, although I did not say it, you don't have to be the best or the most brilliant. You just have to have exceptionally good work habits, become indispensable, and you will attract good teachers and coaches. Now, some of my friends say, can I ask your advice? I say, no, because you haven't taken the last advice I gave you that was very good. No, you don't get any more. <laughs> Not for free, you don't. Now, now, you see, we laugh at that, but in your own life. Oh, what did you learn from Lady and the Champs? I'm not telling you because you never gave back the CD I lent you in Darren's last speech. Where's your commitment? Do you have an interest in? Everyone has an interest in. Do you have a commitment to? It's the people that have the commitment to that we're willing to help. And you just work more, you practice more, you rehearse more than everybody else. Because I have friends who are a lot more talented than I am. However, they are lazy. They took their natural talent for granted. Discipline. Not an end in itself, but a means to an end. My brother, who I, who, who I quote frequently, his company is called Discipline. And I spoke to him this morning, and there is an exceptionally good chance he will be here next year. 
internationally acclaimed rock and roll guitarist. According to Rolling Stone magazine, the 42nd best guitarist in the history of the world, living or dead. And do not think ring rock star. He is the most analytical, modest, shy, brilliant, articulate philosopher you'll probably ever meet. Without my personality, I have to protect it. <laughs> All right, so the dictionary definition. The dictionary definition of a premise is a basis of argument leading to a conclusion. This is all in your handout, so don't worry. This is how this is interpreted to your next speech. This is a simple premise formula. Even if you do not state it, as I did not exactly in yesterday's speech, this is the premise formula you fill out for every speech. If you give the same speech multiple times and you always have to develop your basic core message that you personalize, this is how you focus on this audience. Every dot, dot, dot means we're going to fill in the blank. Can the subject of your talk, and it could be slash result. How? So, for example... If I said, Jeff, every doctor can, with your audience, you'd say how. Every doctor can double their practice and have healthier patients. Oh, I want to do that how. The one, two, three, four points of wisdom is the foundation of your structure. The premise of this session is every lady in the champ attending. Now, whatever your next upcoming speech is, you fill in who is the audience. Every lady in the champ's in attendee can create your keynote faster than you think. How? By... Mining your life for content, starting at the beginning. Designing your presentation focused on the audience, which is why the basic presentation, presentation skills for builders, might not be the same as presentation skills for doctors. It might not be the pres same as presentation skills for people who want to get paid. The content's the same, the personalizing and examples are different. Structuring your speech conversationally. A good presentation, if you sat down and had a conversation, I'd make a statement. You'd say, how? Can you give me an example? When did you know that? Well, how would I apply it? When you're delivering a presentation, whatever you say, you imagine what would the audience ask you if you were having at dinner. That's what they're thinking, and you answer their unstated questions. That's what I mean by logically. If you sit down and have a conversation, and they're asking you questions which doesn't lead to your next segment of content, maybe your presentation is structured. Little off track for the audience. Building rehearsal into your everyday life. You know that means talking, practicing at the dinner table. Now, this is the Fripp speech model, which you have probably seen multiple times. It's in your handout. You need a strong opening and a strong close. Yesterday, one of the sessions was about your options of openings. You do not necessarily write the opening of your presentation first. I recommend you always have in your back pocket some of your favorite techniques or actual openings. What would it mean to you, your career, your company, if every time you stood up in front of five, 50 or 500, in a boardroom, training center or convention hall, if you were confident, you were powerful, persuasive, professional, compelling on message and a resounding success.
If you want to accelerate your career, transform sales results, develop leadership skills, or even become an in-demand, highly paid professional speaker, then FRIP Virtual Training is designed for you. FRIP VT Powerful Persuasive Presentations is my highly interactive, learn at your own pace virtual training around all area of presentations. It is almost as if I am there, sitting next to you, helping. FRIP Virtual Training is a multi-million dollar, state-of-the-art, web-based training platform. It is designed to closely emulate personal training and coaching. It's almost as if I am sitting with you 24-7 as your own personal speech coach and sales trainer. Sign up now, take a free trial, and experience three of our content-rich chapters. Then join and take advantage of my 30-plus years experience and in-depth study. Make the commitment to your career. Reap the benefits of Fripp VT by making it a consistent part of your personal development. You'll be glad you did.